get to game three in a moment, but first, we gotta bring you up to speed what happened in game one and two. Coach Peck, what you got? Oh, game one was an overtime thriller. Nafisa Collier went to work specifically in the second half, but the closer, it was Courtney Williams that hit the dagger, and then in overtime, she had a total of five points that to pull off the win in game one. In game two, it was all New York City. Brianna Stewart set the tone with her hustle. WNBA Finals record, seven steals in the defensive duo. But Nyja Laney Hamilton got buckets too. She was the separator, dropped 20 points as the Liberty even the series. Let's talk about the biggest difference between game one and game two. The Liberty started great in both games, but it's how they finished that made the difference. Game one, one of seven from the field in the fourth quarter. They couldn't buy a basket. They finished so much better in game two. Four of six from the field, due in part. Nigel Laney Hamilton played all 10 minutes in that fourth quarter. They closed it out. Well, I have been courtside, but I feel like it's like 1,235 WNBA Finals game. <laughs> and game one, a that lot of time thriller should be running on repeat on ESPN Classic, if that's yes. the thing. Yes. I don't know. It should be there. But either way, guys, let's fast forward to where we are now, game three. Coach Peck, what would you be looking for? I'm going to piggyback on what Drea said and talk about how they finished. Well, Nafisa Collier wasn't able to really finish in game two because of foul trouble. But can we just take a look at their fourth foul in the third quarter? This is bull malarkey. Oh, I just feel like Brianna Stewart subbed Fee into Sabrina and got called for a fourth foul. She had to take a seat. Minnesota's at their best when you're closing the third quarter into the fourth, and she was not available early. Not bull malarkey. Right. Oh, tell me you're from the South with words like that. Look, the Liberty, they can afford foul trouble based off of their talent. The Lynx, especially in the piece of color, they cannot. Bull malarkey is amazing, but CPI, I agree. That call was terrible. I am interested to see what the foul count is. New York shot 14 free throws. Minnesota only shot seven. The other thing I have my eye on is Benajah Laney Hamilton. You talked about her 20 points in game two. She didn't look like herself at all. All playoffs until game two. You heard what she said to Holly. That shot finally kicked in. She wasn't just talking about that jump shot. She has gone through a lot to get back on the court. And you know, we talk about basketball like a game of chess. She's like the knight. You know, the little sneaky one that could jump over the opponent Ooh. and do a lot of things and hurt you in a lot of ways. Minnesota has to account for Benaja now. Well, because Benaja scored the way that she did, Minnesota's going to have to adjust their defense because they've gotten away with playing off of Benaja Laney. We can take a look at the anymore. tape and watch how Minnesota is able to rotate players in. You see Bridget Carlton come in when Brianna Stewart has the basketball to protect the paint. Now, what Minnesota is going to have to do is Alana Smith has got to take the first pass out, not just go back to JJ. She's got to take the first pass out. They need to triangle switch. And on this next option, when Sabrina cuts to the basket, Courtney Williams comes in. Kayla McBride has got a pill switch so that Atlanta Smith can drop to the corner. They've got to talk and communicate. They cannot be so predictable on the defensive end. You're right, Coach. The Lynx, they really have to defend Vanessa, but they also have to score against Dewey. Watch these defensive plays. I don't know how she got to that. Not today. Two people, but this is what I call a 5.6 swing. Sweet. Because watch this right here. After getting the block, she drifts over to the corner. Her defender is ball watching instead of watching Dewey. Instead, now she gets the front row seat to her knocking down a three, but it's better than that because how bad do you want it? Look at Stewie battling against her former Husky, her former teammate. What I love right here is just her commitment to putting her body on the line to make the play. I'll say this, 21 points, eight rebounds, five assists, more importantly, a WNBA Finals record, seven steals. The hardest thing to get your player to buy in on is defense, and they got that executed perfectly from their best player. Were you hoping that travels? Because Brianna Stewart said earlier today that she looks forward to an arena that's cheering against her. Well, Minnesota fans have their work cut out for them because through the first two games of these finals in Brooklyn, the average attendance is 17,889 fans per game. That is on pace to be the second highest average attendance in the finals all time. And according to the Minnesota Star Tribune, the Lynx already sold 17,000 tickets for game three.